Welcome back to Hot Rod Garage. I'm Tony Angelo, this is my buddy Lucky Costa. Hello. And today we're geared up for an awesome time. We've taken the show on the road and we're at my home shop in Pennsylvania. Why is it colder in here than it is out here? It's cold everywhere here. Man. It's springtime, this is nice. My last shop was in Northeast Philly, which is a pretty industrial, grimy area. Then I moved to LA, started doing this show, and it was time to come back with kids and stuff. I wanted to find a place that was sort of had some good hot rodding history. That would be a cool place to live. And I found that northwest of the city is just what I was looking for. Where we are right now is surrounded by all sorts of hot rodding history. There's SW Race Cars, a 60 year old chassis and racing fabrication company. There was Grumpy Jenkins, 60s, 70s, 80s, legendary racer. And we're just south of Eastwood Tools in Pottstown, PA. And they moved to this area in the 60s because they said it was the hottest cruise spot in the country. Those are all good reasons to live here. So there's lots of good history in this area for hot rodders, and we hope to become just a little part of it. Could we get some heat now? Yes, bring it down, bring all it right. down, all right. bring it down. So these PA episodes are gonna be a little bit different, a little colder than usual. This is the car we're gonna work on. It's a 2006 Chevy Impala SS. Can we go in though? No. Ah. It's springtime, he's gonna be fine. This doesn't really seem like a good Hot Rod Garage project, right? It's too new, it's too front wheel drive, and it's kind of too boring. Let me show you why this is still a great project. These things are LS V8 powered. It's a sideways 5.3 all aluminum making 303 horsepower through a set of LS6 heads. And that means this thing hauls ass. Let's hop in, I'll show you. It's got a heater? Yeah, it's got a heater. Oh, it's better already. This car goes zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. <laughs> and I can vouch for that. And it runs like a 14.3. This is a burly car. Front wheel drive V8s are still V8s. They rule. Tony. What's up, bud? I like Pennsylvania. Hey, uh, Tony, my brake pedal's not working, apparently. That's it. You'll be all right. Just hold on tight. Why, Tony? Why? <laughs> so, this thing rips. It's so fun, right? For a front drive car? Give me a minute, please. You are right? You gonna throw up? <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty burly... Yeah, yeah, this cruiser. It surprised the hell out of me. Yeah. And I like it, but I want way more. Can't turbo it, done that to death. Can't supercharge it, it's sideways. How would you double the horsepower on something like this? Well, what if we just got a second engine, crammed it in the back, and made it 16 cylinders and all wheel drive? That's crazy talk, I made Tony. a twin Pala, because that's exactly what we're gonna do here. <laughs> so to find a donor engine, I went to North Philly and bought cheap, under three grand, a Pontiac Grand Prix GXP. It's got the same exact drivetrain, and it's a perfect donor. Now, this is a crazy fab-heavy episode, and we just happen to have a killer fab shop sort of connected to the back of my shop. That's where Colin Wolf is, you know him as? The Tig. Colin made a cradle for the subframe that holds the engine in trans. We're gonna weld that whole cradle into the car, integrate it as part of the roll cage, make it all one piece and then do four wheel drive burnouts. So we're not the first guys at Motor Trend to do this two motors, one car thing, but trust us, we're gonna be the first to really make it work. First thing we gotta do, cut that Impala to pieces. So if he fabricates it, is it a fixture? Yeah. Or a jig? It's always a fixture. We're gonna start tearing the back seat of this thing out, the trunk, the back doors, everything's gotta go. Then we'll remove the suspension, cut out a ton of metal, start cramming that engine in there. Brake lights seem a little overrated. What's behind you doesn't matter. I don't know what these are for, but we don't need them. How do we feel about permanent skylight? Fine. The romantic moonlight cover? 
Yeah. No time for romance. That's what my wife always says. We unbolted a bunch of stuff, and I wanted to make sure that Lucky will be comfortable, you know, and feel like he's in his own environment in Philadelphia. Cheeseburgers are on the way. This is what this dude loves. Cheeseburgers, Sawzalls, and I got a brand new power probe for anyone no. to do some wiring later. That's right. <laughs> Car's coming down, and then we're gonna lower the rear suspension onto the ground and leave it there, and it's never going back in. I wanna make some racket up in here. Enjoy the show. Test fit number one. Let me help you guys. Come this way. Ugh, use the force. Hard right. Back to you, pull to you. All right, bring her down. Here it goes. Twin Paula, here we come. Like you, Tony, I'm not slowing down so I see sparks. Atta boy. <laughs> that is too crazy. It's good. Whoa. It's kind of slammed, but if it's good, this is going to be hilarious. What a dumb good idea. There's basically four frame rails in this thing that we chopped off, and we're gonna try to get those connected to these four posts for the subframe. This thing is going to be awesome. I'm not 100% sure how this strut layout is gonna work in the back of the car, but what I wanna do is be able to space the subframe up and down, sort of put it at different angles to change the anti-squat and make this thing really hook. So what we're gonna do is just build these big sort of Pac-Man style spacers. Colin's modeling them right here. We'll loosen the bolts up, jam them in well, above the subframe, so sort of rock it either to and fro to be able to adjust that anti-squat and make sure this thing is a rocket ship. To and fro? To and fro. Buy some stuff with somebody else's money. Count me in. Come on, Colin. Be sure to get yourself something nice. Okay. All right, so we're out back in SW where everything really happens. They've got a couple giant water jet machines, some crazy computer controlled lathes, different mills, all that sort of stuff. And they're going to cut us these spacers on one of their giant water jets. This thing actually uses super high pressure of water to cut metal. It's pretty awesome. Six minutes later, all 12 of these things are done. They look basically perfect. This would take you forever to cut out by hand. Oh yeah, would not want to do that. And what's awesome is that uh, the guys from SMW say they do this kind of last minute stuff all the time. Call them up, send them a file, we'll have it out next day. So this shop was a World War II machine shop and they would use this stuff. It's a gantry crane, it runs the whole length of the shop. It's a cannon hoist. Yeah, basically it's a cannon hoist. It's awesome, you can pick up 2,000 pounds of it. Open the gate, lower the bridge. Going down is a lot easier than going up. The beagle has landed back here. It's gonna be super important that we get this thing in the car square and level, and you know, the back engine is pointed the same place as the front engine, so we're gonna be able to really measure the hell out of this thing with it up this high. After a bunch of finagling, we've got this thing in the car nice and square. Colin's got two tubes welded to the body to his cage. Bucky and I are gonna pull the motor out and start working on that thing while he continues to take his engine cradle and weld it into the car. So we're getting close for final destination. I wonder if it's gonna hold up when Tony tries to jump it. What? Nothing. What'd you say? Nothing. Say it again. So on the motor, we had to go ahead and delete all the accessories. 
stuff like air conditioning makes no sense in this application. Power steering, there's no steering in the back. We already have an alternator in the front, so we got rid of that thing. The only problem is the water pump has to spin a very specific direction. And uh, with our routing, the belts would rub against each other. So not only would we smell smoke from the fact that Tony's driving, but we would smell smoke from the motor, the rubber burning. So I relocated the upper idler pulley and I'm gonna build a, another bracket and put the tensioner pulley underneath it. Tom's doing some aluminum welding on the radiator. And I think to move really quickly, I'll weld the pipes into the car. He can cut them and fit them beautifully. That way we'll get this thing done. We gotta hustle. For all you guys that are gonna be doing this at home, here's the pro tips right here. Take all the accessories off, move this bolt hole in about three quarters of an inch. Put a different pulley here, made this bracket. Then just get a shorter serpentine belt and it will work like that. Colin's got his cage pretty much all in the car. He's gonna add a couple more braces, but Lucky and I are raring to go, so that means we're gonna cram in that subframe with the engine and transmission on it. Once that's in, we can start doing cooling system, fuel system, add the shifter, all that other junk, and Colin's got a couple more bars to put in. So we'll be doing that, and he can be monkeying around in the cage. Some new hardware. Keep coming down. Okay. What were this little Pac-Man carts for? So if we use these to space between the frame and the subframe, it'll rock like this, and it should change the anti-squat, meaning whether it's gonna lift the back of the car up or sort of drive it into the ground. I'm gonna put the same level on each of them because our bolts are too long. Then we can remove or add them, move them around to maximize traction. I know we've got a ton of work left to do, but this is a huge first step. I am stoked. I wanted to do this for years. You know, I get to come up with the ideas for the show, but I have to like pass them through some people for approval. And I got the thumbs down for a long time, but we're good now. It's really sinking in that this motor is in the back of the car and it's hilarious and I'm stoked about it. We've got a ton of work left to do. So the next order of business is to lock out the steering and make sure that the rear doesn't steer around. What I'm gonna do is basically replicate this entire thing using tube parts. So all you have to do is make sure that this center bar is in the exact position that it would be in and that the overall bar length is the same exact length. I had my buddies down at s and turn me out some perfect tube adapters s and whipped these up for me in the 16 by 10 millimeter thread size I needed. All right, feel good about that. It's all tacked up, it looks very square. We're gonna just lay these on top of each other and see if bolts go through. Drop the bolts in, they slid right in. Our spacing looks perfect. Let's just weld it up and put it in, we gotta get moving. The crew's been here four days so far. They've seen 38 degree weather. They've seen it be like 75. It's currently pouring. It was crazy windy one day because on the East Coast we have, it's called weather. It's not 72 and sunny every day, which is also kind of a nightmare. I thought it was always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, but they shoot that in LA. <laughs> Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> We have to run two monster fuel pumps, so we got a couple of these sick Holly fuel pumps. They come with a pre-filter and a post-filter. I made these little brackets that will hold two pumps, one on this side of the bracket, one on that side of the bracket. I'm gonna weld it underneath here. It will clear everything. On the back of the fuel cell that's going here, there's the two 8-8 outputs, and they're gonna go directly into the filters right there. And then out of the filters, up to the regulators up there. And from the regulators, they're gonna go into the fuel line, and this thing is going to breathe fire. Got our lockout bar for the steering all welded up. It's gonna fit perfectly, bolt in like the stock steering rack, and it will have no more rear steering. Just like that. Now we'll thread in those Nissan Maxima tie rods. We wanna be using the longer ones. 
Those will connect right to the outers. So Colin and I stayed kind of late last night after everybody cleared out. Colin worked on the engine torque brace because these things have an upper brace to keep the motor from jumping around. And I worked on mounting the radiator, which is, which is totally done. It bolts right in in the back here, which is kind of hilarious. Now, obviously, cooling a rear engine car is totally different because everything goes in different directions. This engine should have the cooling lines running forward. That means it's going to travel down from the water pump up next to the motor and eventually get back to the radiator. But then I think we're just going to gut the back metal of the trunk out, put in some perforated sheets so it's black, kind of stealth, and all the air should flow in the wheel wells and wherever, and then out to this radiator, keep the car cool. There you go. Ah, perfect. So there's a few things left. We've got to make some small exhausts. Lucky's got to wire up the ECU and stuff. I'll put in the shifter, figure out shifter number two, and we're either going to put in a second gas pedal or kind of link them together. But either way, we really have to hustle, which means we're almost ready to take this thing out for all sorts of awesome stupidity. I'm pumped. You pumped? New day, new magic. Let me get this right. Fuel cell, two outlets, yeah. two Holly pre-filters, mm -hmm. two fuel pumps, two Holly post filters, yeah. two regulators. Mm -hmm. Two engines? Two engines. Mm. Well, while he's messing around the fuel system, I'm gonna start working on how we're gonna control this second transmission. That means sticking just an entire second shifter somewhere near the first one. I've got the original shift cable out of the Pontiac. I'm gonna try to make it work. It should be plenty long because the engine's not that far from the driver's seat, so I think this will work. All right, so I wound up tearing the plastic console out of the car. There's actually a nice base here that will hold our second shifter. What's cool is this little platform will unbolt and I'll work in a less cramped space on a bench, make this thing support the shifter, maybe even the trim panel, and then I'll bolt it all back in. What about a cup holder? Cup holder's coming, man. It's in there. I can make it happen. Get your priorities right. I'm just going to do a couple rib nuts in the back of this thing and a few tabs welded on the front to make sure the shifter is mounted securely, and then I can bolt this whole thing right back in the car. Boom. Shifter's done. We're going to get under the wiring deal with this car, and here's the thing. Dudes have been putting two engines into cars for a long time, and they dealt with the same things we're dealing with. One of them is how to sync up the throttle so that they open exactly at the same time. Basically, the throttle pedal is a giant switch, a potentiometer, and as you hit the gas, it gives voltage to the ECU to tell it how far it's open. All we did was split that signal to the rear computer that's running the rear engine, and basically, we'll fire them both up. Vroom, vroom, they should do exactly the same thing. Right, Luck? I hope so. All right, here we go. Do it, do it. Three, two, one. Seems like it's getting better. So as to be expected, when you put two motors in one car, you have a couple of problems. And then when you solve a couple of problems, you find a couple of more. All right, so after a very long day of firing up the front and the back and the front and the back and the front and the back and trying to get the throttles to work at the same time and having some success and then having to reset the ECUs a billion times, I came up with a little bit of a simpler solution. That was uh, twice the problems? Yeah. Twice the motors? Yeah. Two gas pedals. Basically two gas pedals, but they both work pretty much in unison and it's time to finally hear this thing run. All right, fire it up. I'll be like a conductor. Give me one. Give me two. <laughs> Woo! That's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that's absurd. This is awesome. We are super close to driving this car. We've got to put some coolant in it, make, you know, little exhaust extensions, and put the doors on. We're going to take this thing out and have some fun, so we'll see you out there. <laughs> We are 
at English Town Raceway Park in Old Bridge, New Jersey, a legendary drag and drift racetrack. This is the place where I cut my teeth. This is my old stomping grounds. I helped start the first drift events here like 15 years ago with the guys from Club Loose, and they are ripping and still roaring. There's 600 horsepower in this car, pushing all four wheels. Lucky behind the wheel. First of all, I love you, bro. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, so rear motor and drive. Did you start the back one? No. You got to start it. There it is. Oh, this just went from a nice driver to a little sketchy. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Okay, here we go. He has taken his leave. He had some fun in the car. Now it's time to get serious. See what this thing will do. Rear engine, check. Rear drive, check. All right, let's try it rear wheel drive only. Let's see if it'll do some drifty stuff. Car turned off, hold up. I got no electrical power. Oh dear God. So the front motor stopped running and it doesn't want to start up. And it's a real bummer, because the back is fine. And all I've wanted to do this whole time was put one transmission in drive and one in reverse and either tear this thing apart with the burnout or shove it together. And I'm doing my best to get there. It's just not working. Front engine was seized, but we crammed a brand new starter and battery in that thing and cranked and cranked until it fired up and took it for one last insane burnout session. 16 cylinders, got two V8s crammed in this thing, all wheel drive, what could go wrong? Here we go. a tornado of smoke oh my god that's it for this episode of hot rod garage that was unbelievable this car is an animal i just did axis spins in it like it's a like a wrc rally car yeah it was I weird put the front in forward and the back in reverse and it just spun like a top tried to tear itself apart it was like being on the teacups times like a million on nitrous yeah on nitrous Listen, I love this car. It's unbelievable. I've been wanting to do this for so long. I'm so stoked we came out to my shop in Philly. Thanks for coming out. Lucky, the whole crew, thanks to Colin for, for you know, making this possible. You mean the TIG? TIG, he TIGged it up. Uh, English Town Raceway Park for being the best place on earth. 
we can't leave two stock LS engines That's in this That's not thing. even possible. I say we come back, freshen up the front motor because she's a little mad at us, and then we bolt some turbos to this thing, build transmissions, and try to go like eight. Differentials. Listen, don't forget to check us out on social media between episodes. The show is Hot Rod Garage Show on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Tangelo96. I'm Mobile Tech Lucky. See you guys next time. You want to drive it out of here? No, no. no. The back one still works. I'm not getting in that thing. The back thing. one still works. I'll just meet you up front. You can use some water and give it a whoosh. Lucky only knows Boston. You're going to take a car down to the bar? Are you going to park or are you going to drive? You're going to walk. Still not Philadelphia.